What up YouTube, Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. And today we're talking about Kickstarter for beginners. Okay, so what do you have to know as a beginner if you're going on to Kickstarter? This might be a little bit too simple for some of you advanced marketers out there in the audience, but I'm really gonna go through the actual functionality of Kickstarter, what you need to know, how the website works, all of that kind of stuff. This is perfect for you if you're just now getting into crowdfunding. So when it comes to Kickstarter for beginners, usually when we think of crowdfunding, we think of like GoFundMe, we think of raising money for a personal cause. The most important part of crowdfunding is understanding the obligations that you have after you raise money on Kickstarter. Kickstarter. So first of all, Kickstarter. With Kickstarter, you have a few different things. The first thing that you have is a funding goal. So your funding goal is what you are aiming to hit with your Kickstarter campaign. This is the amount of actual money that you need in order to create your project. Now that project could be putting on a theater campaign, that could be doing something like raising money for a gadget to mass produce this gadget, raising money for a board game, raising money for so many different things like a book, et cetera. You can look at the actual categories on Kickstarter and get an idea of that. You have a fundraising goal. Unlike with other crowdfunding websites like Indiegogo, you actually have to hit this fundraising goal. So let's just say, for example, you have a $10,000 fundraising goal to publish a book. So it's gonna be for a book. Now, in order to keep the money that you raise on a Kickstarter campaign, you actually have to raise $10,000 or more in order to keep these funds. This is what we call all or nothing crowdfunding. So if you only raise $9,000 over what's gonna go through the fundraising duration, you're actually not going to be able to keep the funds that you've raised. And this is what makes Kickstarter different from so many other sites out there. There's actually this all or nothing component, and in that way, there's a, a sense of momentum and once you actually surpass that goal, it's almost a celebration because now this product is actually going to be made and put into the world. So in addition to this, this crowdfunding goal, you also have a funding or fundraising duration. So the duration is the actual time that this project is live on Kickstarter. By live, I mean you'll actually be able to donate money, pledge money, give money to this campaign, and be able to claim some of the perks and rewards, which I'll get into in just a second. So fundraising duration. A really common duration for many different crowdfunding campaigns is 30 days. Now, some creators will set durations that are less because they don't wanna work to maintain that momentum over 30 days. Other ones will set it longer because they want more time to actually continue to gather and collect donations and maybe to get some things like a media hit to affect the project and get more traffic and more pledges that way. So you also have a fundraising duration, a very classic part of a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter. In addition to this funding duration, you have things which are fees and rewards and perks. So the first thing I wanna get into are the rewards because this is really where the obligation comes in. So these can be called rewards, they can also be called perks. It's really who you ask, it's kind of like a terminology. Rewards and perks are basically products, they could be experience, but in general, they're beneficial things that you're giving to your backers. So beneficial things could be, if you're a theater project, maybe they get to contribute a line of dialogue to the play. Maybe they get a character named after them. If it's a product, they're pre-ordering the product. Um, you can sort of brainstorm and think of different rewards or perks, things that you can offer people in exchange for actually backing and pledging money towards this $10,000 fundraising goal. So the rewards and perks. If you exceed your funding goal on Kickstarter, you are obligated to actually deliver these rewards and perks to your backers. So let's just say you end up smashing this goal because you worked with Sal, you end up raising $30,000 in the span of 30 days, you then have to ship out $30,000 or the number of products that someone has actually claimed to those backers. So you're actually using the money, the $30,000, to buy maybe either uh, finishing the molding, injection molding for the product, maybe just uh, buying this product product in bulk, you know, whatever it is that goes into the actual creation of the product, you're using that money to, to go through that next step and then to deliver this initial um, batch of products, if you will, this initial order to the backers. And then once that happens, they can actually give you some feedback on the thing that you've created. So let me reiterate that it's not like you can just raise $30,000 and like go and fly the cash to the Bahamas and like sip margaritas 
is and chill on the beach and tell Sal how amazing this new lifestyle is. It doesn't work that way. This is sort of a jump starting a business, if you will. This is jump starting maybe a new career track for you, but at the same time, you have to use that money to go out there and actually finish this product, finish this prototype, mass produce it, and send out the rewards and perks that you've promised to your backers. So there will be a profit margin after the campaign is finished, and I go way more in depth into that in within my book, the Kickstarter launch formula, as well as some of the other costs that are associated with fulfilling rewards, like shipping, like fulfillments, like uh, surveys, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, I'll link down below to my book, the Kickstarter launch formula, and I also now have a Udemy version of that book that goes more in depth into the various sub components of launching a Kickstarter campaign, which I'll also link to you down below. Let's talk a bit about the fees that you're going to incur on Kickstarter. So the fees, Kickstarter obviously has to <clears throat> charge you a fee in order to keep the site running, in order to pay their staff, etc. So you're going to be incurring a 5% fee if you hit or exceed your fundraising goal. So if you have a successful campaign, you're going to have a 5% fee plus transaction costs. So transactions will be like the credit card processing, et cetera. That's gonna to add to the fee. So the actual, at the end of the day, might be around 8%. Um, it's gonna vary depending on where your backers are coming from, the credit card processing, all that kind of stuff. So you can look more on the Kickstarter website if you wanna learn more about the fees, but that's the only fee when it comes to the actual platform of Kickstarter. It's free to launch a campaign on Kickstarter. It's free to go out there, to put your idea out there into the world and to see whether or not this is something that people like or don't like so the only fee is if you are successful on Kickstarter. Now that you know a bit about the basics of Kickstarter, let's talk about what you actually need if you want to raise money effectively on the actual site. So it's not like you can just you know, ask people for money and they're going to give it to you. You actually have to put together a effective campaign video, an effective pitch that's gonna make people excited about joining this campaign, about supporting this, and about be, you know, becoming the first owner of one of these products that you're gonna put into the world. So that's first thing you're going to need, I'm actually going to lay this out as a campaign page, you're going to need a video. So the purpose of the video on Kickstarter is not only introduce people to the project, but you're also going to introduce them to you, to the entrepreneur, to your story. Why is it that you actually care about this problem? Why is it that you're qualified to solve this problem? What have you created so far? What are the prototypes you've been working on? You know, the video there is to persuade people to take action and to read the, the rest of the campaign page. And quite frankly, this is the first thing that people see, so it better be freaking good. In addition to the video, you also have campaign text. Campaign text will be gifts, there'll be images showing the product, showing people using it. Um, it will explain the timeline, the production timeline. You can go into other things like what are the rewards that people can claim. You're really selling the entire experience, giving people some information about the story, telling them about the various functionalities of the product and the benefits and how all of this is going to be an amazing experience for them. You're using the story and all these different elements, and you're putting that into the campaign text here, and there is a format for this. In addition to the campaign text, you're then going to have rewards, which people can basically claim. So these rewards could be limited quantity, they could be standard rewards, but they all have different prices. So these are kind of like different tiers depending on the person's level or interest in actual supporting this campaign. So maybe someone who just wants to show a sign of support is only gonna claim a $5 tier. Someone who wants to own the actual product is gonna go after the $50 tier and maybe even have, you know, be interested in one of the upper tiers if they're really looking for that full experience. So for an actual campaign, and launching a campaign on Kickstarter, the first thing you're gonna need is a pitch video. <clears throat> the next thing is you need to get crystal clear on the benefits that you're conveying to the audience and how your functionality sort of supports those benefits. How is it you're going to tell your story? How is it you're gonna get people revved up and excited? What kind of images are you gonna show them to sort of tease this creation that you're gonna put out there into the world and also the gifts, all that kind of stuff. And finally, you need to think about some of the rewards that you can offer throughout the project. Why is it that someone's gonna to want to uh, you know, actually support this? It's because you know, a month down the road, three months down the road, they're gonna get a reward 
in their mailbox. They're going to actually be able to own this product and show it to their friends and play around with it and give you feedback. They're really early adopters in that sense. You have to think about some of the compelling rewards that you're going to need to offer your Kickstarter backers. So this gives you a really quick overview of just the bare bones and it's not a lot guys honestly like while yes you know putting together a video doing the rewards all that stuff it is work it's doable you've seen other projects that have been on my podcast you've been listening to the crowdfunding demystified podcast um, people who have raised six and seven figures students raising bunches of money um, you know it's not something where it's like super difficult if you actually put your nose to the grindstone you, know, you work hard and you hustle you can easily get a campaign together now the other big component of a Kickstarter campaign I'm gonna sort of end on this note is the actual marketing strategy so typically a crowdfunding campaign is going to have a few different intersections so I'm going to sort of diagram this as a, a Venn diagram here so you have on the one side you have friends and family friends and family are the people in your life they're connected to you on social media these are people that are going to support you if they know that this project is important to you and this is something that you've been aching to do something you've been working really hard on it's almost an extension of the relationship if they pledge support is kind of like saying that they care about you your friends and family are going to contribute a little bit of money to the campaign the next is going to be any people in your tribe so your tribe is the social media accounts that you've created beforehand it's the people who are on your email list. It's really anyone who's expressed interest in the marketing that you've been doing, the pre-launch, if you will, leading up to the actual you know, significant launch of your Kickstarter campaign. So the tribe is the other portion of money that comes in usually with Kickstarter campaigns. And I educate a lot about building a tribe on this channel and also in my books and courses and that kind of stuff. The third component is the actual marketplace. So this is the Kickstarter marketplace. So the marketplace kind of functions similar to Amazon. In any kind of marketplace, you have buyers and sellers. So, uh, you know, Amazon, you have regular buyers, people always buying products, leaving reviews. You also have sellers, people that are creating new uh, products. So, Marcus, it's hard to write and, and talk here, marketplace. Um, the Kickstarter marketplace also has backers and super backers and people that are regularly looking through Kickstarter and are supporting campaigns and, and backing cool shit, like cool stuff that they find, um, they want to be a part of. So you have the marketplace, which is responsible for some of the pledges to your project. You have your friends and family and you have your tribe. And this is sort of the, the holy trinity, if you will. Don't mean to be like blasphemous or anything, but this is like the, the trinity that leads to many campaigns becoming funded. Now you also have other things that are out of your control and things you can do to influence your project. So like media mentions, influencers, all that kind of stuff. But I, that's a little bit beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to give you an introduction here when it comes to Kickstarter, when it comes to what you need to do, the things, the assets that you need to launch a project, and also what goes into these different crowdfunding campaigns that you might be seeing online, some of the ones you might be seeing on my podcast. So the first step for you, if you are a beginner, I swear, the number one reason why most campaigns fail is a lack of thorough preparation, a lack of validating the idea, a lack of knowing how to market the project, a lack of actually knowing how to put together a good and effective crowdfunding campaign page. That's why a lot of these uh, you know, projects fall flat, quite frankly. So the, the best thing you can do leading up to this project, and you're already doing it because you're listening to this video, is educate yourself. So in addition to this YouTube video, this YouTube channel, I also have a book out there called the Kickstarter launch kick I'm always messing up how I spell this <laughs> Kickstarter sorry launch formula this is a really easy book um, a lot of people have said very nice things about this book it's gotten a lot of great reviews and quite I think it's it's kind of for me like a culmination of my knowledge uh, from the last six years. You know, I started in this industry in 2012. A lot of the things I've discovered about, you know, secret like perks and add-ons and stretch goals and how to market a project, how to get instant funding, how do you maintain momentum, all the kind of stuff that, that goes into an effective campaign, shipping, fulfillment, that kind of stuff, I catalog in the Kickstarter launch formula. So I have this as available on Amazon. You can get a paperback version, you can get an audible version if you want to listen in the car or on the way to work. Um, I also have an ebook version. Now, in addition to the Kickstarter launch formula, I also have a new course out there by the same name, which you can grab on Udemy. 
So Udemy, uh, it's a really simple course learning uh, platform if you've never heard of it. Basically, you can go on there, you can purchase this course, you can go through the various video training modules, and you can learn um, a little bit more in depth, I would say, than the Kickstarter launch formula, actually, um, what goes into a powerful crowdfunding campaign that actually raises money. And the other thing I did within my Udemy courses, um, I get a lot of feedback from people being like, Sal, Man, I love your videos, but I just can't always be listening to them. You know, I have to be at home. Sometimes I guess I can watch my phone, but it's really not, it's not unique to me. Like I can't be taking this with me as I'm going on the subway or something. So what I did with the Udemy course is I actually created an audio file of all of the videos. So if you want to, you can download that, create the playlist, you know, download that to your phone. And while you're watching the videos, if maybe you have to go and run, you have to go on a, an hour uh, car ride or something like that, you can continue learning by listening to the audio MP3 versions on your phone and just be scrolling through and literally downloading this information into your brain. So this is another great um, option, I think. And I also included other things like checklist items, what do you need to know as you're getting started. Uh, I also shared some secret videos that I haven't shared anywhere else that, that go into the psychological mechanisms and triggers that actually get someone to say, yes, I want this product, or get them amped up. Uh, so that, that's kind of unique that I haven't shared that in any of my other uh, products or out here on YouTube, et cetera. So the Udemy course is another great option very low entry point. And finally, I think um, for many of you in the audience, you know, people have asked me, so how do I get in touch with you? If I want you to have a personal touch, to give me feedback, um, you know, to, to get, take a look at my campaign page, how can I do that, Sal? Of course, I also offer coaching and consulting and longer term programs. So if you wanna get in touch with me, I'll also include a link down below in terms of my coaching. Um, that we can do an initial call, we can get a sense of what it is you're doing, what you're launching. I can also share with you my feedback. So that's another great option is um, my coaching call. That's a good way to get started and also get your foot in the door and make sure that this is something that you're serious about. Is this something you should move forward with? Is this something you should waste the time to actually put together the reward tiers, the video, all that kind of stuff. But guys, thank you so much for joining me on this YouTube video. I hope it was helpful for you as you're learning about Kickstarter, as you're learning about crowdfunding. My name is Sal and I'll see you next time.